Okay, so here we have some basic conversions. Some of you had some hiccups. You made small mistakes, but overall I wasn't very concerned with this one. So do this. You're pretty good at converting, right? All right, the next. This is what we call the best buy type of questions, which is important to figure out your dollars per liter, guys. It, if you have it, if there's dollars ever and you're trying to compare, you always want to go dollars divided by quantity. That's what we call the unit price. It's, you know, remember unit rate? I talked about unit rates. That's how you do it. Right? I always want the dollar amount on that's usually when you go to a store that's how you would do it okay so for a superstore we need to just say hey it's 854 for a gallon which is the equivalent of 2.79 liters which ends up being 225 a liter sobeys you gotta watch out it says two bottles of 750 ml right so it's 399 for that essentially which turns out to be a liter and a half, you divide that. You divide top or bottom to get your unit price. So unit price, unit price. And yes, Superstore is better. Uh, and then buy 41 cents. A lot of you just did this. It's actually 41 cents for every liter you buy. So units, if you see a U there, it's just units. But you know, don't sweat it too much, just remember. For next time so well done there you'll have a couple of those so you gotta watch out okay. next fuel economy uh, right there's a formula for that uh, what was it kilometers no was it liters yeah liters divided by kilometers liters but divided by kilometers times a hundred I'm pretty sure I gave you that formula at some point, right? So here, uh, Christi uh, Christina has a better fuel economy because uses less liters to drive the same distance, right? So this is the better one. I didn't ask you by how much, so uh, no need for that. And then the scale diagram, bit of a pain for a lot of you. And that's okay. It's better for it to happen now than on the actual test right so yes i needed a scale diagram and so basically folks when when the scale is in different units there's no need to convert everything to centimeters you know what i'm saying all you need to do is <clears throat> you take that right you go one centimeter is uh, five feet and remember this is in this case diagram and the bottom number is actual that still stays the same but i'm not asking you for a scale factor so don't worry about it so let's say you wanted to figure out the 18 foot length here you would just go 18 feet which is the actual room these are the dimensions of the actual room you figure out x right and that's what i did here where is 18 feet right here it ends up being 3.6 centimeters right so I kind of tell myself, okay, to, to draw this to scale, I need to use 3.6 centimeters, which is here. Then I figured out the 25 foot length, which is the work that I'm doing right here, which is five centimeters. Uh, you can boot do both, but I, remember the deal is do both. Technically, you're supposed to put the actual dimensions on there. You've just drawn it to scale. But if you do both, you're safe. Right? <clears throat> so this should be five centimeters with a ruler, right? So I do check. If you're off by a little bit, that's not the end. Right? But that's five centimeters. This is 3.6. Right? Just over 3.5 there. Off by a hair, not even going to worry about it, right? But it needs to be close. And then, watch this. If you do a little bit of math here, Right, if this is 18 and this is 7, I just go 18 minus 7, that makes this stretch 11. So I figured that out as well, and that gave me 
centimeters for this stretch right there. So you don't need to figure out the seven really, you just once you make a 2.2 bend down here, you know this you, you just fill in. You don't need to figure it out actually. You don't need to calculate every single length. And the 1.4, I did calculate and seven and seven used to be the same. I just calculated one of them to be 1.4. And then uh, I just close it in and make the diagram accordingly. If you don't show me the work, it doesn't have to be beautiful, right? Uh, scale diagrams, I, I care more about the actual diagram. So however you want to do this, a lot of you did a lot of work there, right? You converted everything, all the feet to centimeters. And so your measurements were a little off. That's fine because you're losing some accuracy every time you convert. Um, I'm fine with that, but still I needed these measurements to be um, accurate, okay, like the, according to the centimeters on a, on a ruler. So half a mark deduction to one mark deduction, that was the common deduction here. So not a big deal. I think I can tell you this. I can tell you this because I don't want you to waste too much time. There's no scale diagram on the test. All right. You okay with that? No scale diagram on the test. So worry, worry about everything else but a scale diagram. Okay. This one was actually, even though you might get see some red here, I was actually pretty happy with how you did this. A lot of you um, were very aware that you couldn't buy partial quantities, and that's very important for grade 12. Okay, very, okay. So anyways, the surface area, ceiling and walls, gets you to 824. Then I subtract two windows, two doors, and the 260 square feet of the cabinets, right? So if you do that right, you get 476. Some of you already multiplied by two here. I was okay with that. I was okay with that. Uh, when I calculate the cost of paint, remember there's two coats. So I need to take my paintable surface, times it by two, and that is really the equivalent of painting this much. Find out cans. Cans times price times taxes. Well done on the taxes, by the way. That gave you a certain amount of marks right away. Then you get 4154 if you did like me. Some of you got three cans, two cans. It's all over the place, but that's okay. Step means, step means, okay, I got the, I got your mistake. You, you made a mistake, but I'm following, I'm following, I'm calculating. You're still doing the rest, Good. all right, okay? For floor, I did throw a curveball at you, but a lot of you caught it. Floor is this, right? When you divide this by four square feet, that's actually the number of planks that you're finding, right? Because every plank uses up four square feet. So you're trying to see how many planks go into 224, which is 56, a round number. Then you divide it by six to see how many boxes that would be. And that's, you need to buy 10 boxes, right? And so it's 10 times this times that, which is 1652. A lot of you got that number. So just watch out. Just watch out when you do your work. And some of you, uh, I liked what you did. You went, uh, a box has six times four, a box has 24 square feet. So you could have just went uh, 224 divided by 24, approximately 10 boxes as well. So well, it works, it works. It's, I, I figured that out and I, I can follow. So do it the way you feel comfortable. Next we have uh, scale diagrams. Well, two shapes that are have a scale factor are similar, and so I take the I take the height of both of them. Obviously, this is the new one if this is the original. I can't have different units. I do some conversion down here. Watch this, right? So this I would be looking for. I take this back. So now it's centimeter, centimeter cancel. Uh, I multiply both of them by 100 because there's two decimals down here. 
that gives me this. I would have accepted that. A lot of you use the math one to get that. I'm okay with that as well, which would be 0.15, but it would be 15.19%. Because remember, I always go back to this, what's on my calculator to get this. It's almost like you're answering this and then you're answering that. You're going to write a provincial exam next year. Did you know that? It's back on the table, the government. Don't be scared of it. I'm just letting you know. And so I, I mark the way they train us to mark you. Okay. So um, here it is. Um, you know what? This was done fairly well. You plugged it in in the right spot. You noticed you had the cube root. And you get 7.5, which in turn gives you 750%. And remember, 100% is your base. So you actually are 650% larger. You got to take 100 away from it. The smartphone, also, this one was done very well. We're talking areas. There's your scale factor. So we square it because we have area here. Very well done. Please don't forget that. Okay, 9.6 inches squared is the surface, the area of this new screen. And then because your scale factor is 4 over 5, it's 80%, which means there's a 20% reduction from the original. Okay. I, I also will say I found that this question may have been a little unfair. Some of you squared the scale factor. And that's this is the reason why I'm going to make it out of 24, this one in particular. Because if we are comparing areas, you actually do need to square this. So next time I'll have to be very, very specific saying the new phone is this much smaller. Okay. That's what I meant to say here. And that's that. If you have any questions, come and see me. Uh, and that's yours to keep. What are we doing next? Mm, I think I'm just going to let you work uh, the workbook uh, questions, 11, 12. Work through that. Um, maybe I'll give you a little bit of a hint. See, see, these ones are really small charts. We just did a big one. I just did it. A, I did a smaller version of that. Right, but you're doing the same thing. Um, but pay close attention. Charts are all good. I don't mind them. But the, the like the the questions at the back, like the word problem, something like this. You'll have at least one that is a bit longer, like this, on the test. Okay, so make sure you also focus on those and everything else. Just review, right? go through your books. Do questions that I've assigned that you haven't done yet, stuff like that. Okay. No skill, no skill diagrams, right? Remember that. <laughs>